The question is, um, you know, what kind of observation sheet right, do I need? And this is going to depend a lot on what you're looking for. There are a lot of checklists. There are a lot of other formats that you can find online and other studies. And you might decide to d des design something yourself. But I want to give everyone kind of a, a general idea of one way that you can use uh, or create an observation sheet that's versatile enough to be used in a lot of different scenarios. So if you're going to be observing various classes, which all of you are, are going to be doing, at the beginning, at the top of your observation sheet, well, I would first give it a title and probably call it something like, guess what, observation sheet. So we'll probably call it an observation sheet at the very top. And you could be more descriptive if you want. Um, but yeah, I would probably have some kind of heading and let's give it, doesn't matter here, maybe center it. Okay. Now at the top, I would have information about the class. So maybe you have the name of the teacher. Now this is just an example. You can rearrange this however you want. Um, and maybe you create a table if you want to make it you know, make it pretty, but the, my, I'm just going to give you kind of a rough, uh, draft here. So you might have a date. So whatever day that you're observing, I would include the date, the name of the teacher, maybe the, the class. Now the class could be the, the, the level of the class or the age. Okay. So you can describe the class itself. Okay. If it's a, an extension class level three, if it's a primary school class, whatever it is, you can describe the class. Um, what else? I mean, that's basically, there might be some additional information, maybe the name of the school. And again, you could probably create two different columns and make it, again, kind of clean it up a little bit so you don't have a lot of space here. But basically at the top of your form, you would have some kind of information about the class itself. Then what I would do, um, okay, I would probably insert a line here. Again, this is going to be ugly, but you, know, you get the idea. And then down here, I would have, this is what I would do. And if you're doing this electronically, it, 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 it makes it a lot easier. I would have um, something like maybe the, the lesson and interaction patterns. Now, this is going to depend on the purpose of your study, what you're looking for. But what you want to do is you want to break down your observations into chunks, into, uh, yeah, chunks of, of the class. So, so here, um, maybe... The lesson, if the lesson itself has a title, if the teacher is, you know, expressing something there, you might include that information. And then I would have something called the activity, interactional patterns, and then time. All right, so each of these... Again, the observation sheet is only to analyze. It's basically you're writing out, trying to get down on paper or in the document, what you observe, what you see. So don't, don't waste a lot of time trying to analyze. Don't, don't try to, in the, in the moment that you're trying to observe, we're not worried about trying to analyze the situation. That's going to come later. Right now, you're just trying to capture what the teacher says, what the teacher does. So here... We'll have the lesson, whatever the lesson happens to be. If it's if it's obvious, if it's not, of course, leave it blank. Again, this, these are notes for yourself. The activity, interactional patterns, and the time, and then the memo. All right, so the activity, as you know, a class is usually broken down. Maybe at the beginning there's some kind of introduction. Then maybe there's a, a, a small you know, activity that they do that lasts a certain amount of time. Here you're basically going to describe in your own words the activity, what the activity happens to be. 
All right, so maybe it's some kind of game. All right, and you just write down whatever whatever the, the game happens to be. Interactional uh, patterns, let's say it's peer work. So this interactional patterns is either going to be whole group, usually whole group, individual work, pair work, small group work, basically. Okay, and this just gives you kind of an idea of what's what's going on. Now the time is really important. I would include the beginning and ending times. Now there are two different ways to do that. What I would suggest doing is um, indicating the actual time. So let's say that the the game clue started at 8:05 a.m. and they finished at 8:30 a.m. I would actually write down the the hours just to make it easier. You don't have to, you know, you just glance down at your your watch or whatever and say, "Okay, it's this is what time they started and this is what time they concluded." This gives you amount of time, it gives you perspective. Some of you might depending on the purpose of your research, especially like for example, L1 L2 use, knowing how long a particular activity lasted it might be useful okay so i would include that and then in the memo you're just writing out what you observe all right so all of this information up here should take just seconds to complete seconds right no time whatsoever the bulk of your time is going to be here just writing what you see and and what i would write out is this what is the teacher saying or doing what are the students saying slash doing so it's a combination they're basically four things that you can be writing at any given moment what is the teacher saying what is the teacher doing what is the student what are the students saying what are they doing right so the teacher is writing on the board or the teacher is typing text into the chat and you're trying to capture as much as possible. Now, at the same time, all of your observations should be recorded. All right? So do both. Don't think, well, the class is going to be recorded. I'm not going to take any, any notes. I would suggest not doing that. I would suggest doing exactly what I'm doing here as best you can in the moment of observing a class in real time. Now, when this in this case, when the game is concluded, then you copy and paste and you do the next activity. Right? Maybe it's a handout. Maybe it's an individual and you and you follow and now it's it's 830. So 831 or whatever the time is. And you can, you know, be exact. What it just glance down, whatever the hour is, and they finish here, whatever, and, and then you can you move on. So if you do this electronically, which I would suggest, it's a lot easier because then you don't need to worry about spacing. You know, you, you've got is whatever, however much space you need, you can copy and paste. And the actual sheet itself, I would just, I would create a template kind of like this, where I would start off in blank, just keep it in blank, and just remove this this and I'll upload this again this this template I would you know try to make it a little more professional than what I'm showing here but the gist I think you can get the gist I would start off with something like this right that's my observation sheet and then from there you complete it on a day-to-day -day basis I would fill out one sheet per day right or per 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 class I'm sorry per class and so you, you have all this information that relates to the day and to the class that you observed. And this is very detailed information for that one class. And then start a new sheet for the next observation. And so each observation for each class, then that's how I would, uh, I would manage this, right? Because typically each class, right, it might be a different day, might be a different school, might be a different teacher, et cetera, right? Might be a different hour. And maybe you have here a uh, date, in the hour maybe you have both or maybe you include it up here whatever okay so you have both the date and the hour for those cases where maybe you have the same teacher you're observing the same teacher 
multiple times during the same day. Maybe that's a possibility. Okay, so that's this is one approach. Again, the sheet doesn't have to be fancy. I would try to make it a little bit more presentable than what I've, I'm showing here. But the main point is that it's it's functional. It works in terms of you just basically writing these things down. And as you write these down later on, I should say, when you finish, when you're listening to the recording or you're watching the recording, you're coming back to your notes in your observation sheets and you're putting that those things together. Um, I think it's going to be helpful because the what you're writing out here is what drew your main attention. All right? So when you go back to the recording... Maybe you're not focusing on what you wrote out because it's already in your mind or you, it might remind you, right, that that was the main thing that you were looking at. But when you're looking at and, at and listening to the recording, then you can ver veer off to other aspects of the class that wasn't your focus or wasn't the main focus that you might get that you could come back to this observation sheet and add that information later all right, all right so there's like two processes this you fill it out first in real time and then when you're listening to the recording or watching the video you can come back and i would actually do it in a different color or or make a note to yourself that this was something that you got from you know that you didn't pick up the first time and so on right and then you could expand this however you want in terms of the analysis okay so this is the very basic, but I think functional approach that I usually suggest to students if if they don't already have one that might better serve their purpose. Again, you don't have to use this, but I think it's one way to to go about doing it.